Hello and welcome to our English learning program. Yes, greetings and welcome to this week's program. 今天是第四十八课第一讲，在这一讲里边，我们要学习第四十八课课文《Colossal Cities of the Future》，未来的特大城市。Colossal cities of the future. By the end of the next century, a single city may have more than one hundred million inhabitants. Eventually, there may be cities with more than a billion residents. The monster cities of the future horrify planners. Struggling to cope with today's metropolises, but large cities could offer more benefits than problems. Under favourable conditions, a city with a billion inhabitants could be a very attractive and exciting place to inhabit. Still. One must sympathise with planners' anxieties. The world's largest city now, Mexico City, currently has 18 million people, and a huge array of problems. Smog blankets the city. Traffic noise turns citizens deaf. The subway is so jammed that police erect. Barricades so that women can ride in cars separate from men. Millions of Mexico City's people live in small shanties without running water or electricity. Even so, Mexico City continues to look good to the rural people who pour into the city. The city will have more than 26 million residents by the year 2000, according to the United Nations Fund for Population Activities. Pessimists believe further population growth will eventually cause a virtual collapse of public services in many cities. Potholes. Unrepaired bridges and other problems will make streets impassable to motor vehicles, so bicycles and animal-drawn vehicles will prevail. As the sewer system collapses, people will dump sewage on the streets, where rain will eventually wash it away. Piles of garbage and raw sewage would create epidemics, perhaps even reoccurrences of plague. As conditions deteriorate, city populations would eventually collapse due to malnutrition, disease, and perhaps violence. But optimists see the current problems of expanding cities as merely part of an evolutionary process. London and New York had similar problems, but were able eventually to establish an orderly and safe environment for their citizens. Today, many wealthy people. Who could live anywhere in the world cannot tear themselves away from those cities, even though they continue to have many problems. But can the colossal cities of the future really function without overloading all their services to the point of collapse and destroying the environment through pollution of air and water? The answer, I believe, is yes. A city of one billion could provide very desirable place for people to live and not even seem crowded. Here is how billion city might work. 
it would be completely three-dimensional with many levels of activity. Today's cities operate largely on a single plane, the ground. The result is mammoth traffic jams, frequent accidents and often unpleasant crowding for pedestrians. Billion City would have many levels so that various transportation systems could work without interfering with each other. One level might be for pedestrians, another for electric automobiles, a third for bicycles, a fourth for high-speed automobiles, a fifth for buses, and a sixth for trains, subways. High-speed elevators, escalators, and moving sidewalks would convey people swiftly between one level and another. By building the city both deep into the ground and high above it, there would be room for far more people and everything else than there is in today's two-dimensional city. Yet residents would not feel crowded because they would not be jostled or inconvenienced by others as much as they are today. Air and water would be constantly recycled. All air in Billion City would be passed through a cleaning system to remove dust particles, pollen, noxious gases and other pollutants. As a result, air would be cleaner than in today's cities. Water from kitchens and bathrooms would be carefully cleaned and recycled to the city. The end result would be purer water than cities have today. Electricity for the city would come from many sources, including the burning of trash from the city's refuse collections. Power frugal systems would keep electricity uses low so that the demand on outside sources is low. Soundproof walls would prevent people from disturbing each other by having loud parties or playing musical instruments. Electronic monitors would watch over the public areas so that there would be little crime. Paintings and video scenes of oceans and forests would compensate for the lack of windows. There would be windows, of course, but they might be fairly expensive. Besides, most people wouldn't feel the need for them provided there were suitable interior decorations. All kinds of new technologies are becoming available to help with city problems. What seems to be lacking are the human leadership and management systems to do the job. If we get those, something like Billion City may someday be built and it will be a great place to inhabit. 好,下面请大家准备好用英文回答问题。how big will the future city be in terms of population by the end of the next century? How big will the future city be in terms of population by the end of the next century? It may have more than 100 million inhabitants. Question 2. How do planners feel about the colossal cities? How do planners feel about the colossal cities? 
They feel horrified. Question three: How many people are there in Mexico City, the most populated city in the world? How many people are there in Mexico City, the most populated city in the world? It has eighteen million people. Question four: What are some of the problems facing the inhabitants there? What are some of the problems facing the inhabitants there? Problems include smog, traffic noise. Traffic jams, poor housing conditions, and so on. Question five: What problems do pessimists think future population growth will cause? What problems do pessimists think future population growth will cause? They think it will cause a chain of problems. For example, a collapse of public services such as transportation and sewerage systems will cause recurrence of plague, which will lead to human collapse. Question six: How do optimists take these problems? How do optimists take these problems? They see the current problems as a natural part of an evolutionary process, and believe big cities will eventually grow out of their problems. Question seven. How would the traffic problem be solved in the billion city? How would the traffic problem be solved in the billion city? Billion city would be three-dimensional, with many levels, so that various transportation systems could operate without interfering with each other. Question eight: How would the air and water be treated? How would the air and water be treated? Air and water would be constantly cleaned and recycled. Question nine. What would be new ways of providing the city with electricity? What would be new ways of providing the city with electricity? New ways include burning trash and making use of power frugal system. Question ten. What? Would the walls of building be like? What would the walls of building be like? They would be soundproof. 刚才的问题大家都回答出来了吗？下面我们再来学习一下课文中的语言知识。好，我们先来看一下课文第三段中的一句话。One must sympathize with planners' anxieties. 这句话的中文意思是，人们应该理解设计人员的忧虑。To sympathize with somebody， 意思是对某人表示同情。有时英文中还用 sympathize 这个动词的形容词形式。Sympathetic 和名词形式 sympathy 来表示同样的含义
比如 ，One must be sympathetic to planners' anxieties. One must feel sympathy for planners' anxieties. 这两句话的意思和课文上的这句话的意思是完全一样的。不过，在这里，请大家注意以上三个句子中三个介词的用法。To sympathize with 是短语动词。Be sympathetic to 是形容词词组。Feel sympathy for 是名词词组，它们都是固定词组。英文词组中数量最多的是短语动词，其次是形容词词组、复合介词短语。前后都有介词的短语，比如说 after the fashion of 和介词短语。好，接着再来看一下第三段中的另外一句话。Smog blankets the city. 这句话的意思是烟雾笼罩了这个城市，指墨西哥城市。动词 blanket 意思是用毯子盖起来，布满。它是从名词 blanket 毯子转化而来的。这个动词用在这句中非常形象，能使读者产生联想。似乎让人感觉到墨西哥城上空笼罩着一层浓浓的烟雾，盖在人们的头顶，让人喘不过气来。在现代英语中，由名词转化为动词用是非常普遍的现象，它的使用趋于广泛，经常出现在不同的语体和语言现象中。比如 ，Shao Wang was chosen to chair the meeting. 大家选小王当会议主席。Chair 是由名词“椅子”发展而来的，在这里用作动词，意思是担任主席。The newspapers headlined his long record of accomplishments. 各家报纸以头条新闻。报道了他所取得的丰硕成果。Headline 原来是名词，意思是头条新闻，在这儿它动词用，意思是以头条新闻报道。好，下面我们再来一起看几个句子，这些句子分别在第一段、第二段和第五段当中。By the end of the next century, a single city may have more than one hundred million inhabitants. 到下世纪末，一个城市的人口可能会超过一亿。May 是表示对将来要发生的事情的一种主观猜测，相当于中文的“也许”。可能的意思，但是说话的语气不是十分肯定。对 billion city 十亿人口城市这个设想，当然作者心中似乎也没有多少把握，所以他用了 may 这个字。But large cities could offer more benefits. Than problems. 这句话的中文意思是，但是大城市带来的好处可能多于它所引起的问题。Could， 并不表示过去时，和 may 一样，它也是表示对将来要发生的事情的一种主观猜测，相当于中文的能、可能的意思。但是用。Could 来表示现在或将来的可能性，往往暗含条件。在课文的上下文情况下，就是说，作者认为在顺利的情况下 ，under favorable conditions， 
under favorable conditions. 大城市带来的好处可能多于它引起的问题。Pessimists believe further population growth will eventually cause a virtual collapse of public services in many cities. 这句话的中文意思是：悲观主义者认为，人口的进一步增长，最终将会使许多城市的公共设施。陷于瘫痪。Will 和前面的 may、could 一样，也是表示对将来要发生的事情的一种主观猜测，相当于中文的“量必”“将会”“肯定会”的意思。但是 ，will 的语气要比 may、could 都要强。而且是十分肯定。也就是说，在课文中，悲观主义者坚信人口的进一步增长肯定会使公共设施瘫痪。Piles of garbage and raw sewage would create epidemics. 这句话的中文意思是。一堆堆垃圾和未经处理的污水，想必会引起流行病。Would， 并不表示过去时，而且也是表示对将来要发生的事情的一种主观猜测，相当于中文的“量必将会讲”。它和 will 意思相近，但是语气。要比 will 委婉一些，也就是说，悲观主义者自己也不能百分之一百的肯定说垃圾和污水污染会引起流行病。好，最后我们再来看一下第六段中的一句话 ：London and New York were able eventually to establish an orderly and safe environment. 这句话的中文意思是：伦敦和纽约终于能够建立起一个整洁、安全的环境。Were able to 表示过去能够，而且还表示已成功的行为。这里不能用 could 代替，但是在否定句中 ，couldn't 却可以和 was 或 were not able to 交替使用。好，今天这一讲就学到这儿。您觉得将来十亿人口的城市这个主意怎么样呢 ？All right, that's all for this lesson. Thank you for staying with us. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.